Hello everybody, Corey here. I'm going to go over the trades and holdings for the single stock ETFs uh, for June 7th, which was Friday. Just a reminder, I'm not a qualified licensed investment or financial advisor. I just gather data, present it to you so you can be more informed. Yield Max ETFs are extremely risky. Please make sure you understand the risk involved in these. These are income ETFs, not growth ETFs. Uh, you could essentially lose some of your original capital in these. Um, uh, all right, so because it is a Friday, this will be a longer video. I will swap back and forth between the trades and the holdings because we'll have a lot of these that have closed positions. I will not put those, I don't know, those little breaks in between the videos uh, you know, for each ETF, I'd appreciate it if you could just please fast forward to the ETF you want. They are in alphabetical order, with the exception of the short uh, ETFs, which at this point we have one, which is crash. It'll be last, uh, just for the plain fact of not going back and forth between the short and long. And then, um, if you want to watch why bit it's in a separate video because it's not a single stock etf though it does currently have a single stock in it and then we have ulti uh it's in its own video um and i think that's it all right um so, to look at AIYY. Oh, and then for those of you that may be new, I don't look at these, really look at these trades until we do the video. So, it might take me a minute. And on top of that, I did these, I did these Friday night. Then I, <laughs> I was, it's not Max's fault. I know Max feels bad, but it's not his fault. But he, uh, he needs my help on some things. And then I don't know. I guess I'm just procrastinating. I'm good at that. I just, I don't know. Couldn't bring myself to get the videos done Friday night. I don't know what it was. So I started working on his workbooks to be at least productive. Um, so anyway, that's why I'm just now getting around to this. I was going to do it yesterday morning, which was Saturday, before I went and ran my errands. I was gone all day, and then I couldn't bring myself to do it. <laughs> and then last night, I was going to do it when I got home, and then I couldn't. So here I am, before church, I'm going to try to knock out as many videos as possible uh, because all I'm doing is letting this stuff um, build up on me, and I got to get it done. So uh, maybe I could work in the garden this afternoon and not feel so bad. But anyway, so we have the AIYY. So they have their short calls here. So let's. I know we're starting at the bottom, but there's a reason. I'm pretty sure once I see synthetics being closed out, and they're not new di expiration, there's a reason. So, and it's going to be the short call. So, AIYY closed at $30 on Friday. Well, that's not that big of a deal. Okay. So, I don't understand why. Okay, whatever. I'm going to not get mad about this. It's just AIYY is a sore spot for me after what happened with the last synthetic. Um, because I own quite a bit of these. So I'll just put that out there right now. Uh, but anyway, so $29.50 was the strike price for Friday. And I've clearly got to change my color codes. I need to do that this week. I don't know why I haven't done it in the past several weeks here. But twenty nine fifty, so we're only fifty cents above at the close now. So I don't remember Friday if it was good, bad. I really hope this wind isn't coming through on my iPad since I'm sitting outside. But let's look. Oh, it must have been up during the day when they did this uh, because I paid a dollar nineteen a share to close them out, and we only closed fifty cents above. But anyway, so yeah, a dollar nineteen a share. Of course, they brought in some premium here, but it cost them money, you know, to close this out. Almost, you know, well, $1.44 million. So, what they do, if you haven't been watching this, they'll close out some of the synthetic positions. So, they won't close them out. So they'll roll them to a different strike price, which is what's happened here. So, you can see the first two had a strike price of $30. 
So they rolled them to a 3250 strike price so they could get some money to pay for the short call that they had to close out. But, uh, yeah, so if we look here, oh, I didn't mean to do that, I'm sorry. They got $3 million from the synthetics. So, yeah, and over here you can see they brought in a total of two after paying to close that other one. All right, sorry. We're going to have to get faster. This is going to be a long video. Um, and here, obviously, you're only going to see the new stuff, so we should just hide that because we're going to go over on every one of them. Okay. Let's get this set up exactly the way we want it so you can see everything on one uh, screen. All right. So here we go. So those of you that are new to this, so use this one as the first example. Um, we have our synthetic 3250, which we prefer the, the stock price to be over that. And then we have our short call. We want our stock price to be, un uh, strike price, I'm sorry, our stock price to be under that. So we usually want the stop price between the synthetic and short call amount. Of course, in this case, uh, that's not possible because the short call is below the synthetic. Um, and yes, they're below the, the strike price of the synthetic because they just moved the strike price up so they could get some money out of it. So now the hope is, is that it actually goes up because last earnings, it went up they did a synthetic like the day of earnings when it was at its peak and then all it did was go down from there uh and then they cost i don't know then it cost like six dollars or something a share to close them out of course now i will say it's been a couple of weeks since earnings on this one and it hasn't gone down totally gone down yet so there is a possibility that it could stay around the 30 dollar range whether it goes up or not i don't know and maybe they're looking at historical because that's what I've been doing lately and looking at June and July. Usually the market goes up some uh, and the synthetics close in middle of July. So I don't know. Maybe that's what they're looking at. Anyway, okay. So it looks like we have a possible 78 cent upside here for AI. Why, why? Let me grab my coffee. Sorry if y'all hear if the birds and stuff bother y'all. I am sitting outside. I thought it was a nice morning that I could sit outside by the garden and uh, do my videos. Sorry, I just realized there was something on my coffee cup. All right, I'm going to try to be a little bit more on task <laughs> for the rest of the video. We'll see how, how well that goes. All right, so we're going to go and look at AMDY. Okay, so they closed out the short call that expired on Friday with the 170 strike price. Rolled it to next week, split it up between two strike prices, 172.50 and 175. There's all the other numbers. If you want to see it, they brought in $1.1 million. And then if we look at our holdings, we can see those two strike prices there, and we're underneath those 3 and 4%. It looks like a possible upside of maybe somewhere around $0.30. Cents. Um, we have about a third of the shares at the first strike price and about two-thirds at the other strike price. All right, let's move on to AMZ. AMZ here, they closed out the two short calls they had, 177.50 and 180. And if you look, they close at 184.30 on Friday. So we are above both of these short calls. And I say, well, you look here. I have the stock prices here and the total trades here, if you didn't already know that. Um, so they did not close out any of the synthetics here to pay for this. So I, I'm guessing they had this money sitting in cash. Ooh. All right. Yeah, sorry. It's a great idea to sit out here and do this, but my allergies may get the best of me. All right. Um, yeah, so that costs a lot of money to close those out. Again, they must have had money in cash. We'll go over and see. Um, or maybe they expect it to come in, but it cost them over $3 million to close those out. 
Um, so let's look. So they didn't have it in cash, but they have it in the money market account. I know I have it hidden so you can't see it um, unless that one is the cash one. I just try to make room on the screen. So see the bottom was cash negative 2.6, but they have it in the money market. So all they have to do is move that. All right. So anyway, you see they're now 190 strike price, um, but we're at 184.30, so we're only three cents below that. Looks like we have a possible upside of 65 cents here for AMZ uh, for the short call only. All right, let's move over to Apple. Apple. Let's look at the bottom of those to the short calls. Let's see, the stock price was 196.89 on Friday, and their short uh, call strike price was 192.50. So they closed over four dollars over that strike price, and they paid 389 to close each one of those out, costing 1.3 million dollars. So uh, now I'm wondering. Let's look. Just curious the how much cash they had the day before since they didn't close out any of amsey which amsey was already negative cash okay so now here you can see the difference um their cash was 655,000 um, and their money market was only 2000 so they did not have enough money to cover that one. Okay, some of you are asking why. All right, so, um, so then the first two lines, you can see they're synthetic. They rolled that from a 190 strike to a 195 strike price there to get some income, get some money. Sorry, that's the wrong term. I don't want to confuse anybody. One point six 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 million uh there so they brought in seven hundred fifty thousand but the the point of that is is just to cover um to cover the short call now i don't know why i mean they've had they have multiple synthetics on these um you know before and some of these in here still do so i don't know why they don't just close out enough to pay for you know that and not close out all of them but i don't know i guess that's a question i should write that down to ask jay but then i won't because i'll forget but if somebody wants me to ask that question put it in the comments below so i'll remember because as soon as this, these videos are done i'll forget all about it and then maybe i can ask jay um uh, that question I haven't bothered him with questions in a moral. I'm sure he misses it. <laughs> um, all right. So let's move on over to the holdings here. Sorry. We were talking about Apple. Uh, so we had the short call there, the 202.50 short call. Um, we are below that by 3%. I guess I didn't mention what the short call price I did. I just forgot so quick. We're underneath that 3% at 196.89. Looks like we have a possible upside of about 48 cents for this one. Uh, I could get, for the short call, sorry. I could get Apple up to about $18. I don't know. I don't, it's hard uh, to remember all these, but I don't know the last time it was at $18. Anyway, we're going to move on to Coney. So, Coney here, um, it looks like some people sold out of these, which is uh, odd since it's going down at this point. You think people would be buying in, but they sold 500 there. So... Um, Okay, so we have anyway, they sold out of 500 of each of these. We have these short calls with the strike price of 280. Uh, and all of these short calls are going to expire next Friday unless I 
unless I see one that's different, so I don't have to keep saying it. I'm sure y'all don't care to hear me keep saying it, but anyways, uh, that's a that's a big difference. We're 13 percent below that, so uh, of course, it looks like on Thursday we were around 257, and on Friday we we're at 244, so that's a big drop. And uh, I swear I keep hearing thunder. Um, so anyway, that gives us about a two dollar and seventy eight cents to go up. It looks like it did drop a dollar on Friday too. So maybe if we can go back up, that could get us twenty one, twenty three, twenty four and a half somewhere around there. If we can get back up to, if we can get up to two eighty. Of course, I say back up. Um, has coin been to two eighty? I don't know. I remember it being in the 250s back months ago, but honestly, I don't know if where it's where it got to before it crashed back down. Um, and that was what, right after the halving, I think? I don't remember now. Or that was of the spot Bitcoins, I think. Okay, anyway. Enough talking, right? some planes. Dizzo, short calls. It closed out of those on Friday. Strike price is 103, 104. Rolled all of it to a 104 strike price for next week. So, then we go here. You see that 104, we're currently underneath that 2% with a 43, about a 43 cent upside for the short call. Let's go to Phoebe. Ooh, we had no trades for Phoebe. Probably because they all happened the day before. Because um, we did have a few that were done on Thursday, but not as many as normal. So we have a short call here for Phoebe, uh, 512.50. We are under that by 4% with a possible upside of 72 cents for the week. Then we have GDXY here. They closed out of the two short calls, 36, 36, 50. They expired on Friday and rolled them to a $35 strike price. And they only paid two and three cents to close those out. All right. So GDXY here. So we have three short calls, 35, 35, 50, and 36, 50. Of course, the majority being at the $35 amount. So it uh, looks like a possible upside of about 65 cents here for GDXY. Of course, wow, I didn't realize this, but the, wow, I guess I should have done the daily summary. I mean, the daily roundup first. Daily summary, that's work. <laughs> uh, because look at that. The stock dropped over a dollar. It dropped a dollar and nine cents on Friday. I say I didn't know this, but I might have known this. I might have bought some stock on Friday. GDXY to be specific. I don't know. I don't know why, because I am I'm, I feel like I know better, right? I wait, should wait till it gets down to about $26 for GDX and then buy some, but I don't know. I had some, just a full disclosure here. I had some GDXY, I bought up front. Then after doing some chart analysis and getting with uh, Mike, the tactical stock scalper, um, and then realizing I probably should have waited to buy in until GDX, GDX dropped some more. So anyway, when it was actually up, I think last week, Maybe it was week before. I don't know. I actually sold some of my GDXY and then when it was up. So then I guess Friday I felt like it was okay with buying some while it was down. I think that's what I did. Now, I'm not saying everybody should do that. I will tell you, historically, there have been some that I've done that, that I've sold. Because, oh, it's high. NVIDIA, for example. And then I wish I hadn't sold, but that's the way it goes, right? And every time I say that or I complain to my husband about how I owned NVIDIA and I sold it <laughs> and this and that, all he ever says is, did you make a profit? And I'm like, yep. He's like, okay, at least you didn't lose money. So I have to remind myself, but sometimes, you know, you know, it, it's just the way it, 
I know some of the others out there feel the same way in the Discord, you know. Uh, if you sell it when it's high, it's going to keep going up. If you didn't sell it when it's high, it's going to fall, right? It's going to do the opposite of whatever I do. Uh, that's how I feel anyway. All right. Um, so, sorry. I know I try not to add my extra my extraness in these if, I, if at all possible just because I know we are always strapped for time when we do these videos just because there's so many tickers you know uh, in these which is why I don't have a lot of time to talk and teach and go through and these videos are sh mainly just to get get through everything so y'all get the data you need uh, but I was thinking if I hadn't wasted a bunch of time and procrastinated, I could have done a video this weekend going a little bit more in depth explaining this one good time on one of these so I didn't have to do it uh, in a lot of videos. Uh, but anyway, I think most of you by now um, know how my workbooks work. Um, if you don't or you have questions, please feel free to ask those in the comments. You know, I'm usually pretty active uh, with my comments and uh, responding. But anyway, okay, so let's try to get on another little streak of going without me talking. Uh, GUI here, they had three short calls that expired on Friday, uh, 17250, 175, and 17750. Uh, we closed at 17446. So we were over one of those. We might have been over two. Uh, when they closed them. Depends on when they closed them, though, right? So, let's look. Um, all right. So, mm, so the, the, the one with the 95 contracts, right? They only paid 20 cents to close that out because we were not over that one. Let's see. So, they closed 460 to close out the first one and 216 for the second one. Where did I say? 174? So we were $2 above the first one and 50 cents below the second one. Yeah, they must have been, we must have been green, greener during the day or up during the day. I don't know, because they paid $4.60 uh, to close out that first one, which like I said, they weren't even $2 over. So more than double, uh, or, yeah. You never know how the market's going to go. And then they were only 50 cents above the other one, and they paid quadruple, more than quadruple, the price to close that one out. Uh, but anyway, it is what it is, right? Straight prices, our new straight prices there are the 180 and 182.50. They ended up having to pay out $502,000 here. So if we go over here, we can see those new strike prices, the 180, 180, 250. We are underneath those three and 4%. It looks like we're evenly split with 1,300 contracts at both of these. And um, so I'm gonna say 27 cent upside because they'll start canceling each other out uh, as it goes above that. So let's move on to JPMO. JPMO here. So we must had some people buy in. They added to the synthetic, created a new short call there. And how many contracts? So that was for 45 contracts. And then the next two is closing out the one that expired on Friday and then adding to the short call that they just created on Friday. That's why it says new, but they're both the same strike price there. Um, so if you look over here, that was 940 contracts. They did the same strike price, 20250 to 20250. Um, so yeah. So overall, they brought in 80, 82 thousand dollars there. So if we look here, JPMO, we're almost above that synthetic, just like five cents. Uh, we're almost in that sweet spot between the two. So that's pretty awesome there. We're looking about a 20 or so cent up increase uh, possible upside for the short call there on J J P M O. I don't know why I was fixing to say J M. Okay, so Mernie here they had a short call on Friday that they closed out uh, 147 strike price. They closed at 151. 
Next week's drape price will be one fifty seven fifty. But let's see what we paid to close out this past week's. I should do a freeze pain. What do y'all think? I think I should do a freeze pain because it always irritates me when I roll over and I can't see the stock price there. I don't know. But, um, yeah, they paid $6.35 to close that out. And how far above were they? They were $4 above the strike price. So they ended up having to pay out $745,000 here. So if we go over here to Murney, we see our new short call, the 157.50. We're underneath that by 4%. Um, it looks like we have possible upside of 77 cents for the short call this week for Murney. MSFO. Ooh, they had four short calls that expired on Friday. And let's see. So let's look at our stock price. Four twenty three eighty five. We were well, they're not in order. So we were over the first line and the third line at the end of the day. So we don't know where they're at, at the in the middle of the day. So we were over that first one, almost nine dollars. And then we were um we were over that a dollar something on the third line there. And then there we also have the fourth line where we were a little under, but you know, we don't again we don't know when they closed these out. So they ended up paying that first one that was almost nine dollars over ten dollars to close those out, uh, which we didn't have a lot of contracts there to begin with. The forty two fifty or four two two fifty point five strike price. I forgot what I said now. <laughs> we were a dollar and thirty-five cents over. We paid double that, two dollars and sixty-five cents to close that one. Hey, but I guess the good news is the four thirty-seven fifty. We only paid one cent to close those out, right? Look at the the positive side, which is one thing I don't do. If y'all, uh, for any of you that truly know me, um. But I try sometimes. Hunt the good stuff, right? For all of my uh, military people out there. and Resiliency training. Resilience training. Um, anyway. So we have all of those rolled to one strike price for next week. For twenty-seven fifty. They brought in 280000 out of all of those trades. So if we look here, we only had that one strike price, the four twenty seven fifty, which we are only under by one percent. Okay, so who wants to do the math on that? <laughs> Was it three? I don't even three dollars and sixty five cents, maybe. Don't hold me to it. I could be wrong. I'm not trying too hard here. Um. Anyway, we have eighteen cents here for the uh, possible upside for the short call for MSFO. So let's glance at Misty. Ooh, we had way too much stuff going on. Um, damn. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. My bad. But I'm just glancing at this and I'm looking that they closed synthetics, which tells me they paid to close some of these out. Which sucks because I'm looking at the strike prices and none of these were, it was not over any of the strike prices. And the 1610 strike price was where the majority of our contracts were. My guess is they closed these out before MicroStrategy closed at this price. All of these could have expired worthless. Oh my goodness. All right. So let's just pull the band aid off. Holy shizzle. Oh, I bet. I bet that makes somebody feel sick at their stomach right there. $5.5 million. They're probably like, nope, we're good. <laughs> so these technically would have expired worthless, but instead they paid $5.5 million to close them out because I'm guessing... I don't, 
I'm guessing that the stocks drops. Let's see. Because if I remember correctly, it had been over it this whole time. I'm going to pick my phone up off the ground. This is one that makes me want to actually look it up. Because I, since I don't remember how Friday went. Um, of course, I don't have it set up on my iPad to show everybody. I don't have... Oh, <laughs> yeah. That sucker tanked at like 2 o'clock. So they... Man... Yeah, this thing was up and around 1700 until, uh, and then at 2 o'clock now, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not sure which time zone this is giving me, since I live, like, on the middle of, I live on the edge of Central and Eastern, uh, I have all of my clocks set to Eastern, but I technically live in Central, but then sometimes, like, when I check the Weather Channel or sometimes my charts, They'll tell me a different time zone. So, don't hold me to the hour on this uh, exactly. But this one's showing here at 2 o'clock. We were all the way down to 1,600. And in fact, at 15 minutes later at 2.15, um, we were all the way down to 15.86. And then it basically just stayed around there and then dropped back down to that closer to that it did come up a little bit to about 1622 and then it dropped but man it's just like within those 15 minutes it was like a free fall like a waterfall going on there so i don't know what happened honestly but um on the way a lot of these look like it looked like they closed uh or they would have closed you know almost worthless or closer than what they had paid for them so my guess is the whole market had went down in the afternoon, but I don't really, let me just look. Okay. Okay, so it was the whole market because it happened. So that's why a lot of these, it look, we paid a lot more to close um, out than we necessarily had to because, let me look at this one at the time. And I've rounded up, well, this one is, say, 2 o'clock. It's like 2 minutes till 2 or and then it just started again. It was a free fall for 15 minutes. The sucker just kept going straight down. So yeah, it was the entire market. Um, but all right, sorry. I apologize for those of you that's listened to me through this, but that sucks. <laughs> so anyway, they closed out. Uh, they moved the synthetic from a 1540 strike price to a 1550 strike price to pay for that five, what I say, five and a half million dollars. Um, well, they only got a million for doing that, but that's all they needed, I guess, because they brought in, uh, 4.1 million for the $1,800 strike price short call for next week. All right, so let's move on over misty so now we have three short calls for next week 1800 1820 and 1850 i really hope this sucker gets to this because i think if it does i'm going to sell out of my micro strategy it's been several times i wanted to sell it and then i didn't and then it dropped and i was like i knew i should have so then i could have bought it back down while it was low of course my luck will be i guess i can let y'all know when i sell it because uh when i sell it then it's going to keep going up right <laughs> All right, I know y'all don't think I'm funny, but um, anyway, we're beneath all of those strike prices, 11, 12, and 14%. Majority of the contracts being at the 324 strike price. I mean, sorry, being at the 1800 strike price, we have a possible upside of $3.24 there. All right. Sorry, I was looking at the prices. Okay, so let's move on to Nephli here. They closed out the short calls that expired on Friday, which we look like we were above the strike price, at least at the close of the day we were. So I wonder about in the middle of the day. But we closed at 641.47, and we had a strike price of 640 and 645. 
uh, yeah, they paid $4.25 to close out uh, the 640 straight price that were only over a dollar or something, and then 70 cents for the other one. And then they, we have a new short call for this week at 650 for all of the contracts there. All right, so here, only one, the 650, we're underneath that 1%, which is also 650, the same thing as our synthetic. So I guess we're coming back up from whenever they created these synthetics, but we're currently under this eight and a half dollars. We only have 22 cent upside, about 22 cents for the short call. So let's move on to NVIDIA. They had three short calls that they uh, closed out of that expired on Friday. We closed at 1208.88. So they were above the first two here. Um, at close, uh, 70 something dollars. And, oh, I'm so, whatever, on math today, 15. Yeah. So 20, what I say, tw I don't know now. Around 73 and 23. Uh, that's not too bad on the prices then. As far as what we paid uh, to close them out. And then we have our, we only have one at straight price. So they were all rolled. That's why they're split up like that. They just rolled all of those to next week. Um, but all to one strike price, so twelve fifty strike price there. Um, of course, as we know, though, this has got, this is going to split. So that's going to put us at a 125 strike price. Don't ask me why. I just had to do math on that. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, All right. The 1250 strike price were below that 3%. It looks like we have a possible upside here of 95 cents for the short calls. <clears throat> All right, let's go on to OARC. OARC closed out the short calls. They expired on Friday, 43 and 43.50. Of course, at the close of the day, they were over both of these. Um, and it looks like they rolled them to next week with the 46 strike price there. Uh, you can see the prices they paid to close them out. And then they paid almost $2 million to close those out. So we have the new $46 strike price. We're underneath that by 5%. We have a possible upside of $0.51 cents for the short calls. Then we don't have any trades for PayPay. So let's move over. Um, strike price is $69, currently underneath that 2%, and possible upside of $0.44 cents there for PayPay. We move on to Block, or I'm sorry, Squee. Um, they closed out the short calls, expired on Friday, 65 and 66 strike prices. Of course, they, we closed on Friday above the first strike price by 10%, but they rolled those to next week to 66 strike price. Um... So they paid 65 and 17 cents to close those out there. So anyway, they brought in $371,000. And if we look at the holdings here, they actually have two strike prices now. My neighbors. A 66 strike price and a $70 strike price. Uh, we're, like I said, we're underneath those um, one and seven percent. Majority are at the sixty-six, so we have about a twenty-six cent upside there for Squee. Let's glance at Tesla. They had uh, two uh, two short calls that expired Friday, one eighty and one eighty-two fifty. Sorry, they're split up there for some reason. That's the way they have it on their holdings. Uh, we were beneath both of those. And it looks like our new strike prices for next week are going to be 182.50 and 185. 
with the majority being at the 185 there. So they did good on these. They brought in $8 million. So we have 182.50 and the 185 straight prices, which were under 3 and 4%. So we have somewhere around maybe 40 cent upside here for Tesla. <clears throat> So, can we get over $15 this week? I don't recall the last time we saw um, $15, to be honest. Actually, no, we've been in the $15 range. Uh, we were before we dropped for the X dividend. I haven't seen us in the $16 range in a long time. All right, we're almost to the finish line. And then I've got to go to church. Oh, my goodness. Zomo here. Three short calls, strike prices 115, 116, 117. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to rush now. I didn't realize how late it was. Uh, they closed out of those. Next week's strike price is only going to be 115, I guess, because oil stuff went down. We brought in 165,000 there. And then we can see here that. Um, 115 strike price were under 2%. It looks like a possible upside of 33 cents there for Zomo short calls. Uh, and then we have crash here. So it looks like they have 19 new contracts from people buying in. Uh, surprise people. I guess people are going to start buying into this more. I don't know. I didn't realize we closed at 1977 though. I think I was going to buy some, but I never got around to it on Friday. Or at least I assume I didn't. I don't know at this point. Uh, but the first four lines are 19 new contracts. Um, and then, of course, we have a new strike price for next week, which is 170 Actually, it's the same strike price, 170 So they closed out of the one that expired this week or rolled it to next week, however you want to say it. You can see all the prices there. Well, let's jump over to the holdings. So the holdings here... Um, so we have our short put there with the 170 strike price. We're over that by 4%. So it's looking good there. Um, and then I'm not going to go over the rest of those. But yeah, sorry y'all. I know I made it longer by talking and I, I went outside the lines of just reading numbers. Um, but anyway, I will talk to y'all later. Thanks for hanging out with me and enduring uh, all of my talking. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.